Chapter 9, Part 2 22nd of February 2019 11.15am, Seam Harbour, Car Park I'm a little early to check in, which is no problem. Traffic was a bit chaotic and slow on the way up, but I'm here now. The northeast coast in February is never the most inviting of places, and today is no exception. It's freezing. I will have a walk up to the, up the promenade and to the spa hotel, well, formerly the sanatorium. I'm not expecting to find anything here. I would imagine there is much, much need for a luxury spa to regale guests with stories of TB and chest infections, and I would not have thought the staff would have any idea of the workings of a hospital in the 1930s. But it will certainly be worth a visit. It certainly looks impressive from the photos online. I shall update you again, Mr Diary, when I check into the hotel. I hope the heating is on. I think I'm going to need it. 4.15pm Well, another day of surprises and shocks on the trail of Mr Grimshaw. Not what I was expecting at all, but I'm buzzing again. My boutique hotel room at number 16 is beautiful, by the way, and most importantly, it's nice and toasty. I thought my fingers were going to fall off with the cold by the time I got back to the car, but it was worth it. A friendly host, too. Who needs a luxury spa hotel when you have warm people and a warm room? I left the car at the pay and display car park near the harbour, and there wasn't a soul in sight. I'm not surprised, either. The wind chill made it feel like minus 20 degrees, and I was walking into the wind along the exposed open front. I imagined even the fish out at sea would have their thermals on. Thick, slate grey clouds hovered above, and rain threatened. A truly miserable day weather-wise. As I made my way along the front, leaning into the wind, I made a point of checking the bench plaques and inscriptions. There were eight in total along the promenade. All were dedications to loved ones lost. A bench placed on their favourite spot. She loved it here, one said. It is where he felt most at ease, another. Our treasured place, said one. Lovely reminders of happier days. They must have been hardy souls if they ever stood or sat on the spot of the, like this on a windy day. One, bit, one bench, however had a different inscription. The bronze plaque and bench were clearly very old, much older than the others along the same stretch. The wooden slats had rotted and bolts and screws rusted and deformed with age. The bench looked weary and ready for the scrap heap, but, for now, it remained. The message was a simple one, but it grabbed my attention and got the butterflies swirling in my stomach. It said... To Martha Nugent, friend and inspiration. Without your determination and sense of fun, I would have not been able to survive. This is your seat, if you ever choose to return. E.G. Any? Possibly. Probably. Who was or is Martha Nugent? No dates or extra information to go on, but a welcome surprise indeed. But it made me think of Daniel's words. Part of me expected to see a row of dedications along the front for Ernie, and yet here was one which appeared to be from Ernie. Now I felt I had to find out who this Martha was or is. You don't make this easy for me, do you, Ernie? I seemed to forget the cold as I walked on into the wind. My head was filled with thoughts and scenarios. A love interest? It seemed unlikely. He was only a young teen at the time. The message wasn't a love note either. It spoke of a friendship. But who was she? I turned left away from the sea and I was grateful to feel the wind bash at the side of my hood rather than in my face. I walked up the slight incline towards what was Seam Hall Sanatorium. The inscription on the bench was still tormenting me, but then something else caught my eye. Just off the side of the road was a small gate leading into a garden. There were no summer colours to welcome me as I walked towards the entrance, but there was a sign, and again my heart skipped a beat as I read. It said, Welcome to the Ernie Grimshaw Garden of Hope. 
This treasured space is dedicated to all the staff and patients of the Seams Hall Sanatorium. This garden is funded and maintained by the Seam Round Table Society in memory of all those who survived, suffered or served time here. I felt like I'd found the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Underneath the main text was a separate dedication to Ernie himself. It said, Never doubt who you are, what you are capable of, and what you mean to others, Ernie Grimshaw. This garden is dedicated to you, for all your help, support, love and dedication. You gave hope when there was none, and we will be forever grateful. You helped so many of us appreciate life. This garden is life, a fitting tribute to a truly astonishing young man. Be successful in whatever you do. From the good people of Siam, 1947.